Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, today in our lab we'll be making uh, N-butyl acetate. Um, it's a two-part uh, lab. Uh, during the first part of the lab uh, period, students would actually synthesize probably a 90% pure N-butyl acetate and uh, the whole lab would stop with the extraction procedure. And when they come back for the second uh, portion of the lab period where they would actually um, distill the product that they have saved from the previous lab all right so this lab cannot really happen realistically in one lab period our lab periods are only two hours long unless your lab is three and a half hours long maybe you could push and get it done in one go but I, I don't know if any lab will go past three hours with that said, this lab has two parts. The first part, we will get nearly pure N-butyl acetate. It will have some impurities like uh, unreacted concentrated sulfuric acid, maybe some unreacted N-butanol, um, or any other impurities uh, that, that, that were generated as part of the reaction. So that will, we would nearly be done, and uh, a good indication when you're done with the first part of the lab is to keep your flask or whatever that contains that la the product and gently waft it if you smell that banana or apple flavor from the from the from the product that means you have an ester esters have a fruity smell now in butanol that we start with it, it's really not very pleasant smelling liquid so in the experiment we will be combining n butanol with acetic acid making n butyl acetate Concentrated sulfuric acid, of course, is a catalyst, but it also generates a proton, which will be used towards um, catalyzing the reaction in the forward direction, making N-butyl acetate. So um, the reaction is pretty simple. Uh, let me just quickly walk you through the reaction. Um, here's the reaction. You can see one butanol reacting with um, acetic acid in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid gives you N-butyl acetate. I'm not going to get into the mechanism because we might learn ester in class next week, but this is a fairly straightforward lab. It, although it's, take, it's time consuming, it's nevertheless, it's a pretty straightforward lab. And, you know, I always liked uh, fruity smell, so... This is one of my pet peeve labs, so I figured, you know, let's do it. And uh, if, we have, if we find other alcohols in our lab, we might make other flavors. But for now, we're just going to generate a banana or apple flavor. It is very strong. You will smell it. Don't put the test tube right in front of your nose and smell it, uh, unless you have uh, trouble sensing smell. But... If you just keep it a few inches away from your nose and gently waft the vapor, N butyl acetate is very volatile. So it is gonna you're you're gonna smell it. There is no getting around it. It's you will smell it. It's a beautiful smell. And you can do that to the one butanol before you even put it in the reaction mixture. Just gently waft it and it's not something you would want to smell. But the N butyl acetate, oh it's a pleasant smelling liquid. So that's the reaction right there. And in the next video, I'm going to walk you through the reaction setup and the volume of how much of each reactant I added and what are all, uh, what are all the tips and strategies that you might have to follow to get this lab, the first part of the lab done. And then you will save the product as it's shown in the last part of the video. And when you come back in the next lab period, you would actually distill the product that you made in the first lab period to get the pure, pure N-butyl acetate. Now keep in mind, at the end of the part one of the lab, your product would look kind of light tan brown or maybe even darker brown depending on how uh, vigorously you heat it. And uh, I'll, I'll get to that temperature part in just a second, but, but N-butyl acetate is a clear colorless liquid. So that's the goal. I will show you in the very end the color of the actual product to and compare it to the one we actually made in part one of the lab. With that said, as I always said, do not rush through the process. We're using really pure acetic acid and it's not the acetic acid you find in your stores. Handle all chemicals with absolute care. Do not inhale butanol 
and uh, do not inhale and butyl acetate directly but you can waft the, f uh, the vapors concentrated sulfuric acid is corrosive and it's toxic and it's extremely dangerous wear gloves throughout the lab there is no need to take off your gloves goggles and lab coats so these three things must be on you at all times you cannot uh, be lethargic and take off your lab coats or goggles or gloves I mean things can go wrong and it'll go wrong really quick and you'll have no time to react and you don't want to be facing the consequences of what happens next so take safety precaution do not rush through the lab because you're not going to be able to finish the lab in one go anyway so there's no point in really rushing you will be reflexing in the first part of the lab and and you will distill in the second part of the lab now um, you will reflect for about 35 to 40 minutes make sure make sure you do not go past 30 on the rheostat if you go past 30 you're going to really darken the sample and it's not fun okay i don't want you to redo part one again so do not do not do not go past 30 on the Rio stat for part one. You can keep it at 25 for part two, but then it will already be explained in the video. So for part one, do not overheat the system. You're, you got maybe 20 milliliter, 22 milliliter tops of liquid. That's not a lot of liquid to go and seriously put some heat. Do not, do not go past 30 on the Rio stat. All right. All right, when I come back, I'll walk you through the, uh, the reaction uh, setup and all the other tips and strategies, and I think it should be a very fun lab. All right, I'll see you soon. Stay tuned. Okay, um, as I said in the intro portion of the video, we're making N-butyl acetate. It's, uh, it's got a very fruity flavor. Um, it smells like uh, banana or, uh, or apple, I believe. The product would smell like a banana or apple so we're making in butyl acetate and uh, the reason being uh, we'll be making uh, we'll be learning about esters in the next few classes so I think it will be a good place uh, for students to <coughs> do this lab so they kind of get an idea on how to make esters anyways the setup is pretty simple um, I got my uh, um, jack stand here on top of which is a heating mantle and, uh, and then I got a 500 milliliter round bottom flask you could do it with 250 but to avoid any bumping I'm just using the largest flask we have and it's fitted with a uh, condenser the bottom portion of the condenser is the in where the water is coming in and the top portion is the water out and it's going into the sink and I put a little uh, stopper on top the fine hole you can see it and uh, you really don't want as I mentioned in my previous videos you really don't want to overheat it when you're trying to reflex the system uh, currently I have it about 35 I think it's uh, it's pretty good and then the mantles hooked up to the Rio set you can see it's at about 35 36 and then that's hooked up to the mantle to the power supply so it's a pretty simple setup since I've already started the reflexing process you can clearly see how the flask looks like because I have a boiling chip in there um, it's promoting even boiling and you can see a drop a second is a good reflexing process so try not to overheat the system at 35 on the rheostat is good you can see the mixture is reflexing um, it should be reflect it should be reflex for about an hour and it's about 10 minutes in and so I'm going to give it another 15 minutes and then turn off the heat and then let the system come to room temperature and then transfer it to a separating funnel from there I'm going to finish the rest of the procedure so let me zoom in on how the mixture looks like because I've got a boiling chip the boiling is pretty even and you can count the number of drops dripping and it should be about a drop a second maybe a little faster but drop a second I think would be the the uh, average number there that's probably good reflexing and uh, the whole setup looks good and I'm gonna turn off here and come back with the extraction procedure when reflex is done 
keep in mind the system's got to cool when done reflexing you don't want to dismantle the round bottom flask when the system's hot because you pressurize the system there's vapor and you really don't want to dismantle it when it's hot so allow it to cool to room temperature and then dismantle the glassware and then let it cool off completely before you put it in the separating funnel all right i'll catch you back with the extraction procedure when it's ready okay bye bye tune in okay after the round bottom flask the whole system has completely cooled down to room temperature i dismantled the round bottom flask and um, well i didn't i did not have a o-ring that was uh, compatible with the separating funnel that we have so what i did is i just put a bigger size o-ring funnel and I took one of these ceramic triangles that we use for heating and bent the edges so it perfectly fit the uh, separating funnel. I transferred whatever was in the rod and bottom flask into the separating funnel. Again, the system was completely cold when I transferred it. And then I added 30 milliliters of distilled water into the separating funnel and I also added just a little bit of distilled water into the round bottom flask to get rid of uh, any traces of the uh, the product and then I poured it back into the separating funnel and then I'm going to shake it, vent, shake, vent a few times and then allow the layers to separate. You can already see the layers are separated and I haven't even uh, I haven't even shaken the mixture yet but again keep in mind we've added water and there was organic stuff in the um, funnel so so you would expect a layer separation but I'm gonna shake when shake went and then move on to the next step in the extraction process and when I come back I'll show you what happened with the current step and what would be my next step in the extraction process stay tuned